I think I'm muted. Can you hear me now? Okay. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time that we break out of that cocoon that we sometimes find ourselves in and extend ourselves, extend ourselves out to others? Our theme for the month of March we're continuing is cultivating authenticity. And our topic for today is boundaries build bridges. And so we're going to take a look at the meaning of boundaries, and I'll offer you some tips on establishing boundaries. But I want to begin by asking uh, a few questions, and these are in this category that I call just curious. You know, sometimes you have those, I wonder what, or I wonder if this. And so, if you're in a vehicle that is going the speed of light, what happens when you turn on your headlights? Think about it. <laughs> you know how many packages say open here? And I know when I get something, I look for the open here sign. Where would you go if it said open somewhere else? Why do we drive on parkways and park on driveways? Notice our play on words here. If someone has a midlife crisis while they're playing hide and seek, do they lose just because they can't find themselves? <laughs> just before someone gets nervous, do they experience cocoons in their stomach? Today we continue honoring Women's History Month and I offer this insight uh, today and it's non-reflective glass. And I invite you just to, to think about this for a moment. A woman by the name of Catherine Burr Blodgett. Best known invention is one that we can hardly see and yet we rely on all the time. And it is non-reflective glass. Born in New York in 1898, Blodgett followed an unusual trajectory for women, for women born at the turn of the century. Her father, a prominent patent attorney, was murdered shortly before her birth, and she spent most of her childhood in France, <clears throat> pursuing an education in math and science, fields that women at that time were usually dissuaded from. Back in the States, she earned a master's degree at the, Columbia, at the University of Chicago and continued her education, becoming the first woman to earn a doctorate in physics from Cambridge University. Recruited by General Electric's research lab, becoming the first woman scientist to work for the company, her research led to creating super thin glass coatings that prevented glare and reflection. This improved glass was used by filmmakers to shoot films, and had a major impact on military operations during World War II. Engineers used the crystal clear glass on periscopes and airplane spy cameras to improve intelligence gathering. In decades to follow, this became a popular coating um, for microscopes, glass, projectors, and more. Blodgett received many patents for her coated glass as well as five other inventions, including a method to de-ice airplane wings. I'm sure we're grateful for all of these inventions. And so we say thank you to Catherine Burr Blodgett for breaking through boundaries set by others and living authentically out loud. Today, our focus is recognizing that building boundaries, that boundaries lead to building bridges. And often when we use the word boundaries, we think of physical boundaries. Physical boundaries create walls. However, when we communicate our personal boundaries, instead of a wall, we are creating a clear path for others to connect with us. Therefore, boundaries build bridges. 
And so that's my perspective that I offer this morning is that the purpose of life is to express itself. As spiritual beings, we are individualizations of source with our unique intentions, desires, and boundaries. We have boundaries in the physical, the mental, the emotional, the energetic, and material areas of our life. The desire to express ourselves authentically requires us to become familiar with and clarify our boundaries, not only for ourselves, but our boundaries with others. Offer these quotes from our founder, Ernest Holmes, and he writes this in, in his book, This Thing Called You. You need not ask what others have done or how they have done it. Be yourself and express life as you find it. Never imitate. Trust yourself. Find the self in God and God in the self. And he also writes, the divine pattern would be imperfect without you. Dare to be yourself. Stand in wonder before the majesty and might, the beauty and the power of the divine presence, which seeks expression through your individual life. Boundaries, we can say, are the container in which our authentic, our authentic self resides. And the opposite of establishing boundaries is a reminder that if we live our life as lacking boundaries, this tells others that nothing, that there is nothing that we hold sacred, nothing that is set aside for a specific purpose. It may convey that we exist for their use and for their taking. When we do not let others know our limits, we set ourselves up to experience resentment, betrayal, and anger. To live out loud invites us to share our revelant boundaries out loud. These are the part of our authentic expression of life. We recognize we are identifying boundaries that already exist and have not yet been communicated. And so a couple of steps that I offer to you in this practice is to remember, we don't have to make up boundaries. All we need to do is uncover them. And this is getting back to what Ernest Holmes describes as recognizing our authentic self. Boundaries build bridges. When we communicate our boundaries, it allows us to practice courage and to be vulnerable. Others cannot read our mind, and it's a false assumption that everybody knows this about me. How many times have we found ourselves saying this? Well, you know, they should already know this. They've been around me for X number of years or various encounters, various circumstances. Boundaries are our authentic expression of who we are rather than who we are not. It gives others a path to connect with us. Nancy Levine writes in her book, Setting Boundaries Will Set You Free. Boundaries are where we end and the other begins. Boundaries are the limit that you set to define what you will or will not do, or what you will or will not accept or tolerate from others. Becoming familiar with our limits and our non-negotiables is another way of, is another method of self-discovery. Step number two is to practice courage and to communicate. Communicating our boundaries may feel difficult and scary, but like any other skill, it will get easier the more we do it. Avoidance may feel easier, but there are consequences once boundaries have been crossed, such as the natural reaction to push back and other negative emotions that go along with this. If expressing our authentic self with someone is a problem for them, it may be time to evaluate our boundaries around how willing we are to tolerate people who do not respect our boundaries. This may sound and feel harsh. However, 
We need not feel guilty of saying no to those who do not respect our boundaries. And step number three, no is a complete sentence. I remember when I worked in corporate, this became kind of a buzzword in, in, uh, in the organization that I worked for, uh, especially when something was coming, was, was being delivered top down that made absolutely no sense. It's like, okay, this was negotiated at the golf club on a napkin and it's come back now, you implement this. Well, what resources do I have? What's my budget for this? Uh, what's the timeline that this is this is this is occurring in? And sometimes we just had to bite the bullet and say no. This can't be done the way it is being presented. The same is true of knowing our values and our limits. This empowers us to live in agreement and in alignment with what it is that we say yes to, and what it is that we say no to. Saying no is our right. No creates its own boundary. No is a complete sentence and does not require an explanation. And this took me on a little journey back to childhood. Sometimes when I would challenge my parents about something and they would say no, and I would continue to say it, and they said, it's no because I said no, it's no because I said so, end of discussion, which meant if I continued to pursue it, I was gonna be picking myself up off of the floor from a backhand that came out of nowhere. <laughs> I was raised in a traditional black family, okay? <laughs> when we say yes, but our real answer is no, we comprise our comfort to please someone else, or we give in to something that we don't want to do or to be. It is then that our authentic self is disrespected. This is an example of crossing our own boundaries. Now, sometimes we get upset because someone else crosses a boundary, and yet we are required to also go within and say, where have I crossed my own boundary? And one of those examples is saying yes to what we really want to say no to, for the risk of keeping the peace or going along to get along or whatever it is that we use. Honoring our boundaries is an act of self-love and cultivates our authenticity. When we say no to the thing we, when we say no, to the thing we say yes to something else. So whenever it is that we say no to something, we're saying yes to something else. So again, we have to be mindful of what it is that we're saying no to, because in saying no, we're saying, say, we're saying yes. And this may sound like a riddle to some, but if you really think about it, if I'm saying no to going in this direction, then I'm saying yes to going in this direction. If I'm saying no to participating in this event, then I am saying yes to staying home or going and participating in another activity that may be me, that may bring me joy and pleasure and, and excitement and laughter. And so as we live out loud in a world in the world, it is up to us to honor our boundaries by clarifying them with ourselves and with others. And so the takeaways that I offer to you this morning is we teach others how to be with us. Others only know how to treat us if we let them know. And of course, we do this from a place of love and compassion. It's not from a place of bombardment and you cross my boundary, therefore I'm Xing you out of my life for the rest of my experience. No, no. Knowing our boundaries becomes an act of love. And when we share them with others, it invites us to understand each other better and communicate the way of the heart. Stop playing games that sabotage our relationships. It's a setup for failure for all that are involved. And when boundaries do get crossed, you know, remember we are spiritual beings living in this human experience. And so the human experience is going to offer to us those things which 
may not appear spiritual in the moment. So when our boundaries do get crossed, it's the opportunity to have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation for reconciliation. By remaining quiet when a boundary has been crossed, our hearts remain separate, we feel bad, we may inwardly judge, or we may resent the other. So having that heart-to-heart -heart conversation creates the opportunity for reconciliation. And this is what, as spiritual beings, we are called to be and to live with one another. Being in that place where we are, we are reconciled or reconnected with the inner spirit, because each one of us lives as the life of God. In spiritual, in spiritual communities, it can be easy to put the organization ahead of the individual, creating a culture where people can feel used and resentful. Now, I don't know if that has been an experience here at the Monterey Center. I know for the time that I have been here, what I have observed, and you know, we may still be in our little honeymoon mood because it hasn't been quite three years yet. So we still have our, our good face that is, that is facing forward. However, if any of you here at the Monterey Center, those who are here in the sanctuary with us and those who are viewing online, that are a part of the spiritual community, if you have ever felt that you were taken advantage of, let me know. Let me know so that we be, so that we begin so that we can begin the process of reconciliation. Because I see this as our community. We are here with each other. We are here for each other, and we are here to experience love with each other. This is our overarching theme, that we are here to be and to practice love. Sharing our boundaries invites us to get to know each other just a little bit better. And this is what we are here for in spiritual community, to know each other just a little bit better. And that does not mean that we have to know what goes on with every breath that you take. It does not mean that we have to know what goes on in your household from moment to moment to moment. What it means is that we get to know each other at the heart level, that we get to experience the compassion, the love, the grace, and the joy that makes life worth living. And now I invite us to say our affirmation for the week together. I love myself enough to set boundaries. Let us say that again. I love myself enough to set boundaries. And then what I offer each week is what I am calling now the application of the affirmation. Through compassionate self-inquiry, journaling, and conversation with others I trust. I get a clear picture of what matters to me and what my boundaries and limits. I commit to taking time to uncover my personal boundaries, knowing it is a step in embracing who I am. And I invite us now to come together in consciousness as we just take in a collective breath together. Let us breathe in, release. Let us take in another collective breath, breathing in and releasing. We know that the breath is that which connects, that we are breathing the life of God. They are breathing this consciousness of the all prevailing presence of spirit. Knowing that each one is united with spirit, each one is an individualized expression of spirit. I speak my word now for the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living and for spiritual communities where people are gathering wherever and in whatever nature they are gathering, recognizing that there are many paths that lead to the one source. We recognize and we honor the indwelling presence. We recognize and we honor each other as individualized expressions of pure spirit. 
we recognize and we honor the life experiences that we are going through. And so I speak my word of healing and blessing this morning for, especially for members of our community who have experienced transitions within their own immediate families. Knowing that peace is prevailing right here, right now, in this moment of grief, in this moment of missing the physical presence, and yet knowing that the love of our individual family member, that love is with us now on a non-local level, that that love is warming our heart for each time we have a memory of our loved one, each time we speak their name, we call forth that essence of love. And so I'm knowing that peace prevails in the hearts of those who are experiencing transitions. And there may be experiencing, others may be experiencing transitions in right livelihood from one employment activity to another employment activity, or what may appear as a gap in physical coin, knowing that the spirit is always providing exactly what is required when it is required. Our only obligation is to be open and receptive and to listen to the inner voice, to listen to the inner guidance that says, go here, go here, go here. I speak my word of blessing this morning for those of us who are celebrating significant events in our lives, significant birthdays, significant anniversaries, significant victories that we have managed to live to and experience those things which we have overcome that appear to be limitations, those that we have created that says, I am a unique expression of the divine. Therefore, I celebrate myself. I celebrate myself this day. And for this and so much more, I am eternally grateful. Releasing this word back into that law, which always says yes, I just allow it to be so. And I invite you to affirm this with me as we say together, and so it is. And now it is time for us to participate in the law of circulation. And that is the sharing of our tithes, our offerings, and as always, in deep, deep gratitude for the way that you continue to support our spiritual community, I am grateful. And we have an affirmation of abundance. I invite us to say this together. I recognize the presence of God within as a source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could desire in life. With gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And there are ways to contribute to the center for those who are here in the center this morning. Uh, we have a donation box on our hospitality table uh, right behind the camera. You may leave your offering there. You may also mail in your offerings to our center at 400 West Franklin Street, Monterey, California, 93940. You may text to give. That number is on the screen. And you may also contribute through our website, www.montereycsl.org. And I invite you to visit our website periodically to be aware of what is going on in our community. And also while you're there, sign up to receive our weekly e-blast if you have not done so. This is a way of remaining connected with our community. Today following service is our uh, monthly Soul Collage Circle. You're invited to stay and participate and be a part of that. Um, 
The suggested donation is $35 to cover the cost of the materials. Um, and even if you don't stay for the soul collage, stay for a few minutes and join us for a coffee and, and a light snack just to continue the fellowship. Um, next week will be our spiritual living circle following service. Uh, and this is where we discuss an article or more than one article from our Science of Mind magazine. And just to let you know, our Science of Mind magazine, the current March issue is available for a purchase, a donation of $5. And you can leave that in the kiosk where the magazine is. We will calculate the sales tax. And um, let's see. And to our virtual community that is joining us via Facebook Live and via our YouTube channel, we invite you to come back next week where we will wrap up our theme for March. And the topic will be no approval needed. Sounds like a commercial for a home loan or a car loan, right? No pre-approval required. So let's see how spirit is guiding the no approval needed for our lives. And so as we say good morning to our Facebook and our YouTube family, Again, we appreciate you, we love you, we thank God for you.